Hello again, and welcome back to home. This is your host, The Young Wolf. If you remember from last time, I just got a crowbar to break down this drywall, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we're about to find Rachel's corpse. And I'm pretty sure that this guy whose name I don't even know broke it, or broke her head with a crowbar. Did I break through the wall with a crowbar? With a heave, I swung the crowbar at the wall. I smashed a hole large enough to step through. As I stepped through the broken wall, my breath caught in my throat. This was it. Was Rachel down here? Was she okay? Don't look. Blood. Don't look. Filthy looking pile of rags had been dumped in the corner of the stench that was awful and made my eyes water. I was terrified to even touch the pile to see what lay within, but I knew I had to. I had to. I'd come this far after all the searching, after all I'd seen. When I looked within the rags, did I finally find my Rachel? I pressed Y for yes. Maybe, maybe I put. Maybe I should have put. I. Oh no! My hands trembled as I pulled back of the layers of cloth. There at the center, under all the dirt and mess, was my beloved, my Rachel. Her arms were bruised all over and slashed repeatedly. Her clothes were ripped and torn. And even through all that sickening blood, it was obvious she had been stabbed to death. The knife I had carried all this way suddenly seemed like a poison. What had happened, Rachel? Who did this to you? I thought about all I had seen and wondered if any of it could help me figure out who had done this. And when I couldn't stay there any longer, I stepped away on shaky legs and made my way back upstairs. Reluctantly exhausted from my journey, I could no longer resist the urge to close my eyes. God. Uh, maybe I'd use some of Rachel's travel things. Uh, maybe I was sleepwalking again, or maybe somebody stole it from me. Roman store, that forest of water tower. Was I at those places before? Yeah. I didn't see how it could have happened any other way. I must have been the one to lose my wallet and its contents. But what does that mean? This was the old photo of that other man and his wife, I assumed. I found it in that house. I crawled those faded remains I had found deep underneath his house. What had he done there? Well, what did I think? Was that man involved in this whole mess somehow? I wasn't sure, but the poor old bastard was good and dead. He was a victim, not a criminal. I pressed no, by the way. And then the few broken pieces that remained in the mirror, I could see my face had grown pale and weak. I couldn't bear to look again. It was like I didn't actually expect a reflection. I felt empty and drained. It was the key card I found in the factory, the one that allowed me to slip through that door. It seemed to me that it was probably Norman's, but if that was true, what was he doing back at the plant? Did I think Norman was going back to the factory? Nah. Somebody else is using that locker room, but who? Laptop had finally run out of power. Plug it in. Idiot. Oh, wait, you're out of power. My bad. I forgot. The reflection in that grimy glass was only a shadow, a whisper. Quiet in the room unnerved me terribly. I still loved the old time charm of that claw for the bathtub, though it seemed like cold comfort then. Rachel loved this part of the house. Uh, dude, you killed your wife. I. I'm sorry, but you killed your wife, man. My old office safe sat on the floor. It used a digital passcode lock. Did I try to open it? Yes. Um, leave through the notebook I had taken from the forest. In it were the names that had been written down. Heather, Olivia, Ashley, Cheryl, Iris, Daphne, Holly, Rose, Rachel. Call the names I scratched. I saw a scratch on, out on that old desk deep within those musty tunnels. Was the man in the house really up to something? find the passcode for the safe, I wonder. It was a letter I had taken from the post box. Rachel, were you really having an affair with Norman? Why? I didn't think things were that bad. Later, Rachel seemed concerned. She almost seemed worried of what Norman might do. Did he? Did he do that to Rachel? No. 
she was worried of what you would do. I wish I had watched that tape. It seemed like I had seen all there was. Maybe I thought I was ready to go back into the basement. Doubtful. Mel still sat there heaving on the floor. How long had Rachel been lying in the basement? Let's skip over that real quick. Let's go in here. There would be no more dinners here, no more chit-chat or breakfast, at least not for us. Dude, you're so depressed, but you're totally the one who did it. If I was guilty, I could take this to a warm, safe place and do something about it. Did I pick up the knife? I took the knife and kept it firmly in my hand. Now that I stood there, I realized I couldn't go back into that room again. I had already seen too much. I need to put an end to the situation one way or another. Well, what are you thinking? I must have locked the door. There was no reason to return to the backyard anyway. been there for a while. I knew I needed to escape that nightmare, but what about the knife I still carry? I wondered, even if I left, would it really be over? So I leave that house forever? Not yet. Warm place. Where could that be? Are you going to stick it in yourself? Dude. Dude. Yeah. No. I had found him dead. I wonder if I have an attic. Sorry guys, it's... <sighs> Upstairs once more. This is so not cool. Made up my mind. How long had I been left running? Yeah, and you've still got that knife in your hand, apparently. Nerved me terribly. Hadn't been cleaned nearly enough, still I'd probably do. If I wanted to, I could use that knife to finally end this. Uh, why do I have to choose? Uh, dude, I don't like you because you killed your wife. But, man, killing yourself is just never the answer. Really? Really, what you, what you should do is just go turn yourself in. What? No, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't your fault. You didn't deserve to die. But you did kill her. Do you have to die in order to be guilty? Is, is that what you're saying? Because I knew I needed to escape that nightmare. What about the knife I still carry? Yes, you lift that house. 
Living in this town hadn't been easy. The plant had helped in some way to stay grounded. It kept me in line, gave me something to do, and helped me to get away from my past. When the factory closed, everything changed. I guess that was when I started sleepwalking. Disappearing for hours at a time, I had MRIs and piles of doctor's reports, but nothing seemed to help, not even drinking. But I swear I'd try to give it up. I know it. The sleepwalking never really went, or went away, though. But I know Rachel had tried. I know she had tried to be there for me, even when everything was falling apart. This night had only this terrible truce, but I knew I was a, it was a final act of a long-standing horror I had been leaving. Waking up in that house tonight was the final cruelty. I wish I had remained unconscious in that room forever. I wasn't sure what happened to that other man I had found in the house. He seemed to me more a victim. But what was his role in all this? Now that I thought of it, the sewers were a terrible mystery. What happened there? I was lucky in my way to even find my way out of there. But I never did find out what was on that tape that I now kept. What it might it have shown me? I had found the contents of my wallet scattered throughout town. Why the hell had I had been out there? Had my sleepwalking gone to some new extreme? The thought that I couldn't account for my whereabouts but knew I had been to that forest and even Norman's place, well, it was terrifying. I didn't know what that meant, but at least I had recovered my things. Hopefully, I thought that would have covered my tricks, so I wouldn't be blamed for all this. Deep within those woods, though, was where things became truly awful. Finding that notebook only made things worse. Rachel's name had been on the list, so what terrible plot was she a part of? There was a similar list of names in that desk back in those tunnels. What was the connection? Whatever had happened, I knew at least that Norman wasn't the one who kept going back to the factory. Hoped it meant that he had nothing to do with that guard's violent end. But who had been rooting through all that stuff after the factory? I thought, I just find some solace so we can get to Norman's store. But all I had found were more horrors and more questions. Now that I really considered it, that's when I should have seen it coming. Norman, what were you and Rachel up to? It was obvious things were more complicated than I'd ever imagined. How long had you been going behind my back? More importantly, why, Norman? Whoever had killed Rachel had probably gone after you, too. Maybe they knew about what you, what you were up to. I would never know peace, Norman, but despite your transgressions, a part of me really did hope that you would. When I had marched through the rain towards home, I desperately clung to the hope that this would end. And I guess in a way it did, but how could I have known how hopeless it all was? I started to feel as disoriented as when I sleepwalked. To think of it now, our house used to feel so lively, so warm. But coming into that kitchen, I felt only a cold, empty tension. Every terrible thought I had up to that point was suddenly a possibility. But nothing could have prepared me. My wife, dead, ruined, discarded. Rachel's death was a terrible mystery to me, one that would haunt me forever unless I did something about it. For what solace can a man take in the death of his wife? What comfort can be offered? Rachel had been taken from me out. I might never know why. So I swung open the door and I stepped out into the air. I caught the scent of wet grass and frog. Frog. Fog. Rachel, my beautiful wife, just the thought of her again, cold and inert, shook me from head to toe. What would I do now? Who could I turn to you? Turn to? It would only be a matter of time before the police got involved, before the neighbors knew. The front lawn was soft and giving beneath my feet, and I couldn't shake the urge that I shouldn't stand there, or rather that I should run. Well, there's one ending. From what I can tell, there are probably multiple endings. So... <sighs> this game... Okay. Let me give an actual review on this game. This game was amazing. The amount of ambiance that this game provides is insane. I never ever saw a monster or some cheap death scare some cheap jump scare. Home is dedicated to my wife Nancy, watch your back. See, see, the way he planned it that that makes me think that the way he planned it is that he uh he killed his wife probably drunk but see see I feel like I was right I feel like this guy is just an idiot not not the developer the developer god this game is amazing I I highly recommend this to anyone really like I mean it, it's not like Dead Space where you play it and you're terrified every five seconds that something's gonna come out and rip your head off this is this is tension you're playing this game and you just know something horrible is about to happen but you have no idea what and it gets to you it, it really does it, it gets to you I, I, seriously this game is amazing uh, I highly recommend it uh, that's it for this preview well, playthrough um, I hope you all enjoyed it 
If you really liked it, go out and buy the game. It's really cheap and it's a great story. I mean, you've all seen it, but I know there are things I missed, and if you want to look at them, go ahead and buy it. I'm probably going to play this one more time, but not record it. Sorry. So this is going to be the last episode. So thank you for watching. I have other playlists. Uh, I'll put links to them in the description. You just, if you liked what you saw, check out some of my other stuff. I know I've got DLC Quest and Dragon Age Origins and The Novelist so far. So, check it out. Tell me how you like it. Alright. And I will see all of you in the next video. Later.